guys. Welcome back. Um, I'm going to be getting into some specifics of my HVAC system here, as promised. Um, what I'm doing here is I am I'm, I'm zoning the system. I'm finishing my basement, first of all. And I want to zone the system so that I have um, a thermostat down here in the basement, which is working off of my existing unit. Uh, I have two of them here. One's for the first floor and one's for the second floor. Um, and so I'm going to tap into, first of all, I'm going to tap into the first floor uh, supply duct because that one is, it's going to more mimic the, the type of usage that I have. Um, for the first floor, I, I'm going to run the heat on that um, in the winter and the air conditioning on the second floor one in the, in, in the summer. Um, a lot more than, than vice versa. So since this floor, since the basement is going to more mimic the, the first floor, um, it can, the, the zone, the zone dampers that I'm, that I'm putting in are going to, to close the basement and open the first floor when I need to heat the first floor. And then it'll keep that same system running and it'll close the first floor dampers and open the basement dampers when when it when it needs to run down here so um there's going to be i'm going to be using the arzel pneumatic uh damper system and it's called the easy slide dampers they i don't have those yet they're on order so when i when i get them i'll, I'll demonstrate how to put them in but uh each each one of these round ducts um each run will have will have a damper inside of it and they'll be tied together using using air hoses, low pressure air hoses. And it all just ties into the control panel, which will just kick it on and, and push the push the one set of dampers closed and pull the others open at the same time and and vice versa when as as it needs to adjust. So today I'm going to be putting in a couple of a couple more um, runs. I have a six inch run that's going to be going all, all the way down to that end of, of the basement. And then right next to it here, I'm going to do a seven inch run coming, coming out just a, a few feet and probably down right here um, to like a living room area that, that or a family room area that we're going to have. I'm going to close off that wall and put in a, uh, put in a, a fireplace and hang a TV above it. So there was a fireplace there before, but it was ugly and I had to get rid of it. Um, anyway, so let me get started and I'll, and I'll pick it back up once I'm, once I have, once I'm organized. Okay, guys, here's what I'll be installing today. This is a, uh, what's called a top takeoff. Um, I'm, I'm running, I'm running all the joists or all these, all these ducts in between the joists. Um, I didn't want to have anything coming down out of the, out of the side or out of the, the bottom of, of these trunks just to, you know, I'd have to frame it all out and build, build the, all this, you know, the ceilings down. Um, I thought about pulling down the trunk to install it in the top it, it's just a little bit more manageable but when i when i tried to do that I, I started trying to pull down the trunk and it was just um it was just too much of a bear to to do and i'd have to disconnect each and every run that's going in that's coming out of that in order to in order to take down the trunk and it turned out um i gave it a shot to see if i could just reach up there and and uh make whatever cuts I needed to and, and tie this, this guy in there. And it actually wasn't too bad. It's, it's tedious. Don't get me wrong. You're, you're reaching up over your head blind for the most part, but I got a little creative. Um, I put a, I put a little spotlight up there and I grabbed this mirror of my wife's out of the bathroom. It's on a little stand and I put it up on top of the duct where I'm working. And then I could just look up and see what was down below, um, on top of the, on top of the duct. So that's how I'm going to do this today. Um, these, again, I have, I have these takeoffs, they're top takeoffs. They just, uh, there's adhesive on there that you peel off this tape and you, once you have your cut, you stick it on and you screw it down with a few screws. And, um, and so I, I made a little template, a couple of little templates here. I have a, a, a six inch and a seven inch, uh, piece of cardboard that, um, just to just to mark the square, the size of the square that I'm going to be putting up, uh, that I'm going to be cutting. Right here we go. So, what I am doing here, as you can see, I have my mirror up there, and the piece of cardboard is right on top of the joist here. 
So, or on top of the, the duct. So, um, I'm just going to take my Sharpie and trace around that so that we have our nice cut marks. And then, and I, I, I use the, the takeoff in order to um, figure out exactly where it needed to be. I just put it in place to see, to make sure it, 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 it extended out just to the right spot. And then I put my cardboard in place. So I'll trace that out now and then, um, and then start making the cuts. Right, that's done. So now I'm going to, I should probably turn this way. Now I'm going to um, use a drill with a, a ferrous um, bit on there. To, to make a start in the corner of, of the square that I traced. And then once I'm done that, I'll use my, my tin snips to cut out the, the square that I need. Um, one note, you'll notice that these are, are angled. If they were straight, I would have to turn them on an angle and lay them almost flat to, to make my cuts. The problem is I'll be up against the joist, so I won't be able to turn it and, and angle it down. I need to be have my have my snip straight up and down, which means these need to be angled. Okay? So here we go. I don't know if you'll be able to see my uh my drilling, but uh here we go. Um there we go. I think you can kind of see that there. So I'm going right into the corner. And obviously wearing safety goggles. So I got my, my starter hole drilled. All right. And now for the not so fun part. Um, I'm going to be popping these in there in the, the hole that I made and try to try to work through and, and just uh, you know, even if I just get the tip into that hole and just start to, to cut it a little bit on each side and eventually it'll, you know, that corner will start to lift up and make it easier for me to get the whole, the whole uh, bottom part of the snips in there, the bottom blade of them, get it into the hole and, uh, and make, make some headway. Um, notice there's, um, there's green, there, there's, there's ones with, with green, these are the uh, lefty versus the righty ones. The, the, there's, um, there's the red one. So when you're going clockwise around, around your, your hole, making your cut, you want to use the red ones. Um, that will leave, it'll, it'll put the, that bottom blade, uh, inside in the middle of, so it's, it's underneath the piece that you're cutting out. So it won't damage the, the, the finished side. It'll only damage the, the scraps that you're cutting out. And when you're going counterclockwise, you use the green ones because then, then go in this, in this direction, it'll be, this will be underneath the, the piece that you're cutting out. All right. Hope that makes sense. You'll, if not mess around, you'll figure it out. So this is the part here where, you, where you'll notice, this is where you really need the uh, 90 degree. I don't think these are quite 90 degree, but they're, they're angled nonetheless, maybe 45 degrees or so, so that, they, so that I can make my cuts while the handle's up against this joist. Um, so I'm just taking it nice and slow, trying to, trying to make my cuts. I'm looking in the mirror, which is reflecting down so that I can see that my line that I'm going against. And, uh, all right, I think that's far enough. And what I'm gonna do now is switch to the green handled ones and go counter, uh, I'm sorry, clockwise, right? I think I might've confused those earlier. Might've, might've misspoke and said clockwise when I was going counterclockwise or vice versa. I don't know. But, uh, but now I'm using the green ones and you can see once, since I made that cut in the other direction, um, it made it a lot easier for me to go in this direction because it just lifted up that corner a little bit and gave me some, some breathing room to make some more progress. So, except now I'm at one of these difficult corners again. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll finish going in this direction 
All right, here we have it. So I got this uh, six inch by six inch piece of, of duck cut out. And I'll show you what it looks like up here. Right. Um, try to. My mirror's in the way and so are my tools. So hang on. There we go. There's my six inch cutout, six by six square. So um, now it's time to, uh, I just want to clean that up a little. Okay. Here we go. Careful not to touch the adhesive because it is, like I said, very sticky. And it will get stuck to you and it will stick to your surface, maybe where you don't want it to. So get that lined up. And that looks pretty good. So we'll just press it down all around and then finish up with some sheet metal screws in the four corners, some self-tapping sheet metal screws. All right. And then we'll make sure that this damper is closed and I'll, uh, and I'll tie it off with some, I'll throw a plastic bag over it um, and tape it up like I did a couple of the others. So I'll show you that real quick. Um, that right there. So I'm not going to finish the run today. I just wanted to make um, get the, the the start collar in place and then tape it off so that I don't get a bunch of air leakage while I'm trying to heat the first floor. Um, and again, this one here. And now we have one over here that's the only thing left to do is to um, drill it down into place. So that's a nice simple task. So all right, that's it for now. I'll speak to you soon when I'm ready to to put um, to do the runs off of those uh, takeoff valves, uh, takeoff collars. All right, cheerio.